guys, it's Sierra. Welcome back to my channel. And today we are going to be doing a little investigation and review of those products that seem to be advertised by just about everyone that you follow on Instagram. So I do a lot of sponsorships, both on YouTube and on Instagram. I have zero problem with influencers, you know, working with brands, advertising products, and even the products that I'm gonna test in this video, I'm not going into it with any preconceived notion about the product being good or being bad. I'm trying to remain objective but there are those products that just seem to get on your nerves a little bit because you see them every five seconds. You know the ones I'm talking about. Pretty much every celebrity has taken that photo with the little sugar bear hair gummy vitamin in their mouth doing a little selfie pose. The first time you're like, oh, Cool. You know, a vitamin that makes your hair grow. Wonder what that's like. The second time you're like, hey, I've seen that. And then the 74th time you're like, okay, sugar bear hair. I get it. I, I really get it. It's kind of like two years ago when pretty much every YouTuber was being sponsored by Best Fiends. Does anybody else remember that era? I had them reach out to me back in the day. I don't even know if the game is good or not, but I said no, just because I didn't want to be another one in a million person who is doing the same exact advertisement. So in addition to some of the more harmless products that might be annoying, but there's nothing really wrong with it. There are also some sponsorships that are very, very common on Instagram that I honestly think are very problematic. And I'm talking about the diet shakes. I'm talking about the appetite suppressant lollipops, the detox teas. So those kind of products, I, I'm aware of them. I know they exist, but I'm not going to be trying them in this video. The products I'm going to be trying are the ones that are all over your feed, but aren't actually going to cause any harm to me if they're bad. So I did a little like question box on my Instagram story to ask you guys what sponsorships that you see a ton of on Instagram. We are doing a video where we like test products that every Instagrammer is sponsored by. So what kind of sponsored posts do you see on your feed like all the time? And I chose the four most common companies I saw in that little Instagram questionnaire. And those are the four that I'm gonna be trying and doing like a brutally honest review of. If you're new to my channel, make sure to subscribe, join the family. I post new videos every Tuesday and Friday and I would love to have you here. And you can check out my podcast if you want more like long form conversations about body positivity and navigating your 20s. We post new episodes over there every Monday. So make sure to check that out as well. Now let's go ahead and get into the video. So I just sat down and ordered all of the products on my computer. And now I'm going to kind of like talk through the ordering process. And then once the products get here, I'll be able to like actually really try them and tell you guys the honest truth when someone is not being paid to say that. What is it actually like? Is it actually worth the money? we'll get the verdict. So the first one is arguably the most common sponsorship on Instagram and also the one that I saw most frequently pop up on my Instagram question box. And that is sugar bear hair. So sugar bear hair is a little blue vitamin that is supposed to make your hair grow stronger and longer. You also might know them from the whole like James Charles Tati Westbrook controversy. Sugar bear hair was kind of wrapped up in that. Some of the Instagrammers that work with them a lot who you might've seen are the likes of the Kardashians, Nikita Dragon, Tana Mojo. I have not worked with them, but I have heard from other YouTuber friends that they pay a ridiculous amount of money for these sponsorships, which kind of explains why everyone seems to work with them, but we'll see if the product is actually any good. I ordered the one month supply of Sugar Bear Hair Hair Vitamins. It was $29.99, and then the total for my order was $39.16 with like tax and shipping and everything. So um, once it gets here, I am gonna take those every day for the full month. And I'm gonna take before and after photos of my hair so that we can really see if they're actually working. So we ordered those Sugar Bear Hair Vitamins and now we just have to wait for them to get here. The next product I ordered was FabFitFun. And FabFitFun is that like subscription box of a bunch of like beauty and lifestyle products that every girl from The Bachelor seems to advertise on their Instagram story. I mean, a lot of people do sponsorships with them. It seems like a cool idea. Like I personally love subscription boxes and I love like hair care, skincare, all of the like little like beauty products like that. So I feel like this could actually be something that I would like, but I do see it on my Instagram constantly. So they do four seasonal boxes a year and you can either pay for an annual subscription or just the singular box. So the one single box is $49.99 or you can pay for the annual subscription of four boxes for $179.99. So I just did the single box with tax 
tax and everything, it was $54.11. And after I filled out like the little FabFitFun quiz to figure out which products you get, it also gives you the option to choose which big ticket items you want in your box. I decided not to do that because I wanted to like kind of just do it the way it would happen if the box just got shipped to you and see what I get. So I'm actually low key excited for this one. $50 is a lot, but if they have a lot of good products in it, I could see how that would be worth it, but we'll have to see what I actually get. Okay, so the next one is Shein and Shein is interesting for me because I feel like forever Shein has been one of those like cheap overseas companies that people will do videos about where it's like, oh, I bought the cheapest clothes from Shein. Like, look at how bad quality all of this stuff is. Like it was kind of like, a joke like it it wasn't a company that had a really good reputation or that really anyone did sponsorships with and all of a sudden I feel like maybe in the past six months to a year Shein has tried to like do an image makeover and they work with a ton of big influencers they did like a big trip for Coachella they did like a private jet trip they're like really doing a lot right now so I thought it would be interesting to give them another try because I have tried their clothes before when I did a video on them about a year ago so I don't know if they're just trying to change their image or if they're also changing like the product with it. So the first item I got is this neon bikini. And this is one that literally I have seen probably a dozen influencers post in this exact bikini. I got this one in a size 0XL and it was $13.61. And then I also got this V-cut front bodysuit. I got this one in an extra large and it was $7.78. And then I got this plus size floral print chiffon kimono. This one is in a size 1XL and it is 1461. And then the single breasted not hem cami top. All of these products always have the longest like tongue twister names, I swear. <laughs> this one is in a size extra large and it was $6.84. And then I got the plus size washed denim shorts. I got these ones in a 0XL and they were $14.61. So in total I got I think five items. I tried to get a variety so I could try, you know, a swimsuit. I could try a top. I could try some shorts and we'll see how the quality actually is. The clothes look great in everyone's Instagram photos, but the question is, what are they actually like in real life? <laughs> And then the last product we're trying is a lot of people in that like Instagram question box said that they see advertisements for a company called High Smile all the time. I see teeth whitening sponsorships literally like at least once a day, but I feel like they come from like five or six different companies. There's not like one definitive company that seems to be sponsoring everyone, but I did see this one pop up a lot. So this is the brand I'm gonna be trying. I have not whitened my teeth in maybe four years. I feel like it's something I used to do from time to time when I was trying to work in like theater and TV because you know, that's just kind of like one of the stereotypical things when you're an actor is you have to have like perfectly white teeth. And now I don't, I just brush my teeth and that's it. But that means I have like a nice blank canvas to see what the teeth whitening can actually do. So we just got the teeth whitening kit. It was $59.99 and then the total with shipping and tax and everything was $69.99. Um, how long am I supposed to do this whitening kit for Skylar? Do you know? I have no idea. Did it like, I didn't see anything about it on the website. Hopefully it says on the box. Is it like a one-time thing or is it like every day for like two weeks? So it has like a contraption and then you fill the contraption with paste. So maybe it's when your paste runs out. Weird. So the Sugar Bear hair package just got here today. I have yet to open it because before I start taking them, I want to do like before photos and actually before measurements as well to see if my hair actually looks better after taking them for 30 days and how much my hair actually grows in that 30 days. So the bottle says, we created a nourishing formula of biotin, folic acid, and vitamin C for a hair vitamin complex that is designed to provide essential nutrients for healthy hair growth. This formula formula supports both the strength and shine of your hair and nails. So in theory, my hair should be shinier, it should be stronger, and it should be longer in 30 days. This is a big bottle. How many do I take a day? Uh, two. Two gummies a day. Skylar, would you measure my hair, please? Of course. <laughs> okay. So we are starting with my hair at 18 inches. It feels pretty dry, I would say. I just washed it with my shampoo and conditioner and then just put in like a leave-in product that I always do. But other than that, it's just my completely like natural hair because I wanted to have like a straight one-to-one -one comparison and I'll wash my hair and put the same product in when I do the after shot after 30 days of this. Two gummies. Hmm. 
actually taste pretty good. They taste like um, the fruit snacks that you would get at Costco. I'm gonna insert a photo. Cause I'm talking about the specific like Welch's brand ones. That's what they taste like. So I'm not complaining. And yes, I have zit cream on my face. <laughs> later I am on my last two sugar bear hair gummies let me take them so that I can officially say I've done it and there we go all done with sugar bear hair my hair doesn't actually feel any different like I know it's supposed to make your hair feel like stronger and softer I would say my hair feels about the same I have been doing a really good job with like my moisturizing products and my hair repair products so I feel like that's made my hair feel a little bit better maybe sugar bear hair contributed to that but it's not like a drastic difference. I am trying to like grow out this dead layer of my hair. So I'm hoping that we did get some growth. Skylar, will you do the honors? Of course. Um, I would say you're almost to 19. Oh, wow. Yeah, I would say you're at 19. I think that's, that's actually fair. pretty good. Uh, an, inch an inch in a month. Hair grows at an average of 0.5 inches every month. Wow. I mean, we don't have any baseline for my hair in particular because we didn't measure it for like a month of regular growth before to compare. But if hair average grows half an inch a month, that's like double at least. That's actually really good. You guys let me know, does it look shinier? Does it look healthier? I washed my hair this morning and used the exact same products that I did when we filmed like the before photos and video. I would say that works pretty well then. And especially for someone who is trying to grow out their hair. Well, not grow out all my hair, but just grow out my hair so that when I cut this length to match this length, it actually looks good and isn't too short. I feel like I might order Sugar Bear hair again. I did not expect this to actually work. I'm, I'm pretty surprised. <laughs> so on the Sugar Bear hair website, they have the 30 day supply, which is 60 pieces like what I have, but they also have like five day supplies and seven day supplies, which I feel like wouldn't really be worth it because you're not gonna see that much of a change in five days. Whereas with 30 days, I feel like it was enough to actually, you know, increase the growth. And there are also like a lot of hair vitamins popping up out there. Like I know there's Halo Beauty, there's Sugar Bear, there's a few others. So I don't know if Sugar Bear hair in particular has some sort of like proprietary formula or if they're all kind of the same, but having that increased biotin supplement really did help my hair grow. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, I have I have my FabFitFun box here. This took actually a long time to get delivered. So they send these out on like a specific day of the month. So I think I ordered this on like the 8th or something, but they shipped them out on the 23rd. So I could have ordered them on the 8th or the 22nd and they still would have gotten shipped out on the 23rd. So that's just something to keep in mind, but it is here now. So I'm going to unbox it and we'll see what's inside. Okay, so first thing is the FabFitFun magazine and then the products. So um, this I think is the robe, which is one of the like big ticket items. So let's open this up. This is a very thin robe. <laughs> it's like completely see-through. <laughs> it's really cute. Like the color is really cute. I love the pattern. I could totally wear this like over, you know, like a bra and maybe like leggings or booty shorts, but definitely wouldn't just wear this like as a robe with nothing underneath because it wouldn't really be covering anything up. We have a Generation Clay Brightening Purple Clay Mask. Ooh, I love face masks. I've never been that into sheet masks. I don't know why. I like having like the actual product and applying it. So I feel like this is something I probably will actually use. Then we have, ooh, a Rose Spray Hydrating Facial Spray. This sounds like something else I would also use. Mist four to five sprays onto face before or after applying makeup. Okay, I don't know what it's supposed to do, but I'll probably use it. I love anything like skincare, facial, totally my thing. So it's a hydrating facial spray. So I think you just spray it and it's supposed to help like be a moisturizer, but like a lighter version. We'll try this for sure. Oh, we have two, I think these are hair ties. It says Invisibobble the Traceless Hair Ring. Oh, okay. So is this supposed to be something that you like put on and it doesn't leave that like bump on your hair? Cause that would be really cool. Cause I always like put my hair up to like go to the gym or like do my face products at night. And then I take it out and I have the line or I'll sleep in a bun. And then the next morning it'll have like that very thick 
bump from the hair tie. I mean, it works. It works as a hair tie. We'll see if it leaves a line. I'll try this later. This seems like a cool product though. And it comes with six. We have, oh, another face mask. Oh no, a foot mask. I totally read that wrong. This is the Wish Coconut Milk Exfoliating Foot Mask. It smooths and softens with intense hydration. I'm actually really liking the selection of products in here, but I'm also kind of like a skincare nut. So, oh my gosh, that smells so good. That smells so good. Okay, really wanna try this. This is, it says Burn 63 Resistance Bands. Oh, they're like workout bands. So it has three different levels of resistance for like training bands. These feel pretty nice. I don't usually like the rubbery ones because they dig into my skin. I usually use like the cloth ones, but they feel pretty nice. I don't know if I would actually get a lot of use out of these because like I said, I don't really like the rubber ones, but I don't know if these are supposed to be attached to each other or if it's meant to just be one long strand, but this one isn't attached, this one is. And then the third one, and they're marked as like light, medium, heavy resistance. This should be the heavy resistance band. Okay, this one also isn't connected. So I think that's the way it's supposed to be. And just the medium one is connected. I've never used resistance bands without them being like in a circle. Like I've used them above my head for like this kind of exercises, but they're always the ones that are still connected and I just stretch them. Yeah, I don't know if I'll use these because I already have the resistance bands that I like, but I like that it's a different kind of product that they're including. It's called Fab Fit Fun. I guess that's the fit element. Oh, this is actually a setting spray that I use. This is from Kula. Uh, it's a makeup setting spray with SPF 30. I actually do use this product, so that's exciting. I get a refill of my setting spray that I use. This is actually a really good setting spray. And I like that everything's full size. I feel like a lot of subscription boxes that I've tried are like little trial sizes, which is fun and all to try, but it's not actually getting you a lot of value. Every single product so far has been full size. Okay, and then we have, oh, mystery choice. Okay, so I think this is like a wild card item. Oh, I got a primer. This is Dr. Brandt. That is not a brand I've heard of before, but it says Pores No More Luminizer Primer. It gives a natural looking back backlight glow. I always thought that primers were just like pointless. And then I actually found a really good primer and it totally changed my makeup routine. And like, I swear my makeup sticks on like 10 times longer than it used to. So now I'm like really into primers. So I'll actually probably give this a try. Okay. And then there's a bunch of like filling here, but I think there's another box under it. Oh, cute. It's a letter board. Comes with a little burlap bag to put all of the letters in. And then a cute little letter board to write a message on. That's really cute. How much was the FabFitFun box? Uh, it was $54.11. I mean, that is expensive. I wouldn't think it was a good deal if you did it every month because you don't need this amount of products every month, but it's every season, so four times a year. I actually think I kind of like this. Like, this is kind of really cool and really fun. I mean, it is expensive, but like, I know for a fact that Kula like setting spray is like 20 bucks on its own. And there were so many other full-size products. I feel like you are getting your money's worth. And this letter board is really cool. Like how much would you say something like this would cost? Maybe like 12 bucks? Yeah, maybe like 12 bucks, the robe. I don't know, we'll try it on and see the quality, but probably like 15 bucks and then all the full size products. Let's go try on the robe. Okay, so here is the little robe. I mean, it looks cute, but it is one size and it doesn't close on the front for me. It is pretty small. So I definitely couldn't wear this as like a robe, but I guess I could wear it like around the house as kind of like a home kimono. It also would be cute as like a beach cover up. Yeah, it would. I wish I had more fabric on the bottom. Like the fact that it only comes to here, it doesn't wrap at all. I don't know. I just feel like I wouldn't use it. It's not that great. It doesn't really serve that much of a function, but would you try it on? Cause you're smaller than me and see if it fits over your thighs. Sure. Yeah, so I think it's just supposed to It's not be it's, open. Yeah, I don't think it's meant to be maybe like, like a, a wrap. Robe. Yeah. yeah, cause I don't think there's any way. And if you did, then it would be like a bodycon. Right. Dress. <laughs> would you wear this? Um, I think I'd wear it like around the house or yeah. like out running errands. I do think it's a cute kimono, Yeah, but I don't think it's like, get out of the shower and put this on because there would be a lot exposed. And this was like the big ticket item. Yeah. Like this isn't what I would choose for like the big ticket item. Like I totally. think it should be something that's like higher quality. And I think if anything's gonna be one size, like kimonos usually are fine, yeah. but this one just isn't really oversized anyways. Yeah, and I think the fact that they advertised it as a robe versus a kimono is also an issue. Yeah, I agree. Well, you can well, keep it if you want. I'm not oh. gonna wear it. Well, I'll take it. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Woo! I feel like there
there's a lot of variety here. If you're someone who's really into like skincare and makeup, especially, why am I still holding this letter board? <laughs> I feel like if you're someone who's like, especially into skincare and makeup, this is a good subscription box to have because it's full size products. It's seasonal instead of monthly. Monthly for subscription boxes is kind of a lot. I like that it has a big variety. It's not like just fitness or just skincare or just makeup. There was a lot of variety in here. And I like that they didn't just send me like four primers or like four mascaras. Like I got every product was for a different reason. And I think that's really cool. So I actually would consider ordering FabFitFun again. I don't think I would sign up for the subscription because I just don't want to be committed to getting the box every month. But I actually would consider like when the fall box comes out, going to their website and maybe ordering it. Now let's get into the next item. We also got our order in from Shein. So I'm excited to try this stuff on. First we have the neon bikini. I mean, that's definitely neon. <laughs> It's messing up the white balance of the camera because it's just so bright. And then it also comes with the ruched bottoms. So let's go try this on. Okay, so here is the swimsuit. I actually think it does look really cute. The top I think is supposed to give that like under boob look because if I pull it down, it just doesn't fit quite right and it doesn't have a ton of fabric here. So I think it's meant to sit like this. I like that the straps are really thick. I do feel pretty supported in this. It doesn't have like a ton of padding or like wires or even cups, but the straps are supportive and the material isn't like gaping or anything. The bottoms I, I also really like. They're that kind of like ruched high-waisted design. I would totally wear this. I actually think I will get use out of this. It's pretty cute. The highlighter yellow is kind of a lot, but if you make that choice, it, it does look really cute. I'd say the quality actually is surprisingly good. Like this set, the top and the bottom was 1361. So I expected it to be kind of like crummily sewn together with like strings hanging off. I had tried Shein before for a video and that was my experience. So I don't know if they've like changed their manufacturer or if it's just this item in particular is pretty good, but it feels like pretty nicely constructed. I mean, it's not like fabulous quality, or anything. I'd say it's like on par with Target though. And this kind of swimsuit at Target would be like probably 40 bucks. I, I'm really surprised. I like this, I'll wear it. Then we have the V-cut front bodysuit. This was like seven bucks. I got it in an extra large. Here is what it looks like. Pretty basic, pretty straightforward, just a little black bodysuit. And then I'm also gonna try that on with the plus floral print chiffon kimono. Here is that and these little plus size denim button front shorts. I got these in a zero X. So let's go try all three of these items on together. All right, this is the cheap Shein quality I was used to. <laughs> this is not as good as the swimsuit. So the first thing I put on was the bodysuit and the material just feels really, really low quality, really cheap. I had Skylar feel it. Can you confirm? It's like the worst swimsuit I've ever yeah. It, it feels like a swimsuit, yeah. but it's supposed to be a bodysuit. It also, these straps are like way too loose. Like it shows pretty much my entire bra unless I pull it up like that. The button closure on the bodysuit also feels really cheap. Feels like it definitely won't last through a wash, I'm guessing. And then the shorts, the shorts, first of all, are like too tight on me, but like tight in weird places. Like they fit me here in the waist. I'm not spilling out of the top. And they're like, okay in the legs, but then like, in the upper thighs and in like my pooch area, they're like tight and the buttons are pulling. And like these are plus size shorts. So I feel like they should be built with like the fupa in mind, you know? <laughs> so I don't know if it's because they're too tight or just the construction of the shorts, but they feel very uncomfortable. They are riding up. They just don't feel like they were made for my proportions. Maybe they're made for someone's proportions, but they're definitely not right for me. They also just feel very cheap. Like the buttons on the front literally feel so cheap. You can see. There's already like some strings coming off of the shorts. Not a fan of the shorts, not a fan of the bodysuit. The kimono, however, is actually pretty nice. The stitching feels fine. The material feels fine. I like the design. I will probably wear this. I'd say it feels on par with like H&M quality. Not amazing, but definitely nothing wrong with it. The bodysuit and the shorts, however, not a fan. And then we also have, this is from the standard size section. This is the single breasted not hem cami top. I liked that I was able to try some stuff from the standard size and the plus size. I feel like it gave us a good variety here to test out both sections. So I'm gonna try this on with the same shorts. So let's see it. Okay, I know I said I was just gonna wear this shirt with the Shein shorts, but I wanna give this shirt like a fair shot. Wow, that was a tongue twister. That was a lot of S's. <laughs> but I wanted to give this shirt a fair shot. So I'm wearing it 
with my go-to shorts that I already love so that the bad shorts don't affect how I feel about the top. And I feel like this top is actually okay. It's not as nice as the swimsuit was, but it looks fine. The construction is fine. I like the design with the little tie and the little buttons on the front. I'm surprised that the buttons aren't pulling. I really thought they would, especially since this is like standard size and not plus size. I wouldn't think that they would build that with like a big chest in mind, but it's not pulling at all. I think the fit is pretty nice. The sizing is perfect for me. I do like this top. The only thing I'm not a fan of is the material. It feels very cheap, very rough, but it looks fine. It's just kind of like how it feels I don't like as much. So yeah, this shirt was all right. The kimono was all right. The swimsuit was amazing and the bodysuit and the shorts were awful. So I guess it's hard to say like what at Shein is gonna be good and what's gonna be bad. I know their return policy is terrible. So it would be hard to order from there because you never really know what you're getting. It is interesting to me that it seems like Shein has done like a whole kind of like image overhaul with all of their like influencer and brand work on Instagram. Even just like six months or a year ago, I think everyone thought of them as like a cheap, sketchy company with really bad quality. And now with their shift in marketing, they've kind of been able to like overhaul that image. And I'm gonna guess that they're probably getting a lot more business because of that. But do they deserve it? Do they deserve your business? I would say no. Some of the items are good, but a lot of them are not. And because of their return policy, it's difficult to know if what you're getting you're actually gonna like or if you're just wasting your money. Also, there is a lot of debate around the ethics of Shein's manufacturing process. I'm not really gonna get into that because I feel like I'm not educated on it enough to speak on it, but I will link some articles in the description if you wanna do your own research. I highly, highly recommend it. I don't think I'm gonna be buying from them anytime soon and definitely not working with them, although they have reached out to me many times. I feel like they're reaching out to everyone to work together right now. That's kind of part of their image overhaul. But yeah, I would say that my opinion on the quality of Shein is like slightly better than it was going into this video, but it's still not great. And last but not least, we have Hi Smile. Um, I'm like 99% sure that we only ordered one of these kits, but they sent us two. I don't know if that was a mistake or if the kit is supposed to come with two sets of it. So on the back of the box, it has the how to use directions. It says use once a day for six days. For lasting results, repeat one application every two weeks. And then it says each gel contains two uses, three gels equals six uses. Okay. So three gels and you use each one for two days. So this should be that six day kit. And it says how it works, it whitens in 10 minutes and it has no sensitivity. I do have pretty sensitive teeth. So I'm a little bit nervous about this, but it specifically says no sensitivity. Full disclosure, I am not a dentist, if you couldn't tell. I don't know anything about the actual like science behind this. If it's safe for your teeth, probably should have asked my dentist before I did this, but I'm not, so let's try it. Hopefully I don't mess up my teeth. <laughs> So here are the three tubes of gel. Okay, so they definitely sent us two kits. Yeah. <laughs> here is the little uh, whitening gel tray and then the high smile light. All right, teeth are brushed. Now it says open cover to remove plastic tag from LED light, okay? Attach mouth tray. Oh, okay, I see. It like slides in to here. Apply one quarter gel to front of mouth tray and one quarter gel to back of mouth tray. I only wanna use a quarter. Oh good, it does have markings. Yeah, that's actually really helpful. Whiten for 10 minutes. All right, Skylar, can you put on a timer for me? Yes, ma'am. All right, I'm ready. I hope it doesn't taste weird. Oh. Mm. Mm -hmm. oh your time is up. Mm. Oh, I would like to apologize to everyone for that disgusting amount of spit that came out of my mouth. So it says no sensitivity. I wouldn't say that's true. I think after my teeth definitely do feel more sensitive. I will say I do like that it's only 10 minutes that you keep it on. When I was in high school, I used to do the Crest white strips and those were 30 minutes and they made my teeth feel a lot more sensitive than this gel did. What is the purpose of the LED light? Do you know? Uh, if anyone knows, if any of you guys work in dentistry, let me know down in the comments because I have no idea what the purpose of that LED light is. It didn't really taste that bad. And anyways, I hardly tasted it because it pretty much stayed in the tray. It was only at the very end as I was taking it out that I like tasted the gel. It wasn't bad, could have been a lot worse. Do my teeth look any whiter after one use? I do see a little bit of a difference, just slightly. 
just in the parts that were more yellow at the beginning, I see less yellow now than in the first photo. Do you think I should keep trying it? I'm a little bit worried about like the sensitivity and that I didn't ask my dentist. You know what? I'm gonna call my dentist office yeah. right now and see if they have any insight on it. If they say it's fine, then I wanna do it for the full six days, but they didn't answer. All right. I will call back tomorrow. If they say yes, I'll do it for the full six days and I'll document it. And if not, it seems like it works somewhat anyways. Okay, so it is the next day. I have talked to my dentist about High Smile and I also did some research on my own and here's what I found. So my dentist said that they can't like recommend specific whitening products or not because they don't know everything that goes into it, but they did give me a list of like whitening ingredients that can be harmful for your teeth. And I looked at the ingredients in High Smile and one of those ingredients is in it and that is citric acid. So they said citric acid can be really harmful for the enamel and since I already have sensitive teeth, I then should not be using high smile so I'm not gonna finish the week with it honestly I definitely should have asked my dentist before I even tried it hopefully I didn't do any damage my teeth feel fine now but all afternoon yesterday they did hurt pretty bad and then I found online this article about high smile in particular they did like an interview with an Australian dentist and here's what they had to say so they mentioned the citric acid and how that can damage your teeth and then they also said sodium chlorate could be damaging because it is a poison if ingested and then other concerns they said the mouth and just overuse. So not too many red flags, but what I thought was interesting is they talked about the before and afters that High Smile posts and how they seem a little bit suspicious. Basically, they talked about how these before and afters are likely not showing actual results and how they've been digitally altered. So I don't know. I just thought that was interesting. The jury is still out on High Smile. There isn't anything about it that was like awful, big no, definitely don't use this. Just that the citric acid isn't the best thing for your teeth and that if you have sensitive teeth, you shouldn't be using it like me. And I thought that article interviewing the dentist was interesting. So I will link that in the description. I feel like my teeth did look a little bit whiter, but definitely at the cost of uh, sensitivity. So after trying all of these products that are just constantly bombarding me on my Instagram feed, I feel like the moral of the story is some of these products and companies are actually pretty good. Some are terrible and some lie somewhere in between. Good marketing doesn't always make a good product and a good product doesn't always have good marketing. So don't just buy whatever comes your way when you're scrolling through your Instagram feed. Do your own research and uh, make sure if it's anything that's like health-based, like those whitening products, to talk to your doctor or your dentist or a healthcare professional. Because oh my gosh, did those high smile whitening trays seriously make my teeth hurt so bad for like the next 24 hours. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know down in the comments what your experiences have been like if you've tried any of these products. I keep getting emails from FabFitFun that they're launching their fall box really soon and I'm like legit tempted to order it because I actually had a lot of fun with the products that I got from FabFitFun. But it is expensive. I don't know, we'll have to see. But let me know what your experiences have been like with FabFitFun or High Smile or Sugar Bear Hair or Shein, any of the above or any other Instagram product companies. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Be confident, love your body, and I will see you next time with another new video. Bye!